Hello and welcome to Sunday School, Church of God in Christ. Hope Complains. Lesson 7, October 13th, 2024. Bible Basis, Job 24 verse 1, 9 through 12, 19 to 25. Bible Truth, God takes care of the unjust and saves the needy and gives the poor hope in the battles they are waging. Memory Verse, why, seem times are not hidden from the Almighty. Do they that know him not see his days? Job 24, 1. Lesson aim. By the end of this lesson, your students will explore Job's complaint about the appearance that God does nothing to call wicked people to account. Appreciate that, although the timing of God's justice is often inscrutable to us, it is certain. And determine ways to help God bring justice to the poor and weak. Background Scripture, Job 5, 24. Psalm 55, 12 through 23, read and incorporate the insights gained from the background scriptures into your study of the lesson. Lesson Scripture, Job 24, 1, 9 through 12, 19 to 25, KJV. Why, seeing times are not hidden from the Almighty, do they that know him not see his days? They pluck the fatherless from the breast and take a pledge of the poor. They cause him to go naked without clothing and they take away the sheaf from the hungry, which make oil within their walls and tread their wine presses and suffer thirst. Men groan from out of the city and the soul of the wounded creeth out, yet God layeth not folly to them. Drought and heat consume the snow waters, so doth the grave those which have sinned. The womb shall forget him, the worm shall feed sweetly on him, he shall be no more remembered, and wickedness shall be broken as a tree. He evil entreateth the barren that beareth not, and doeth not good to the widow. He draweth also the mighty with his power, he riseth up, and no man is sure of life. Though it be given him to be in safety, whereon he rests, Yet his eyes are upon their ways. They are exalted for a little while, but are gone and brought low. They are taken out of the way as all other, and cut off as the tops of the ears of corn. And if it be not so now, who will make me a liar and make my speech nothing worth? Biblical Definitions Stiff-necked, Acts 7 verse 51, Sclerotrachilos, Hebrew word, Stubborn, hard-headed, Witnesses verse 58, Marturio, Greek word, those who confirm or give confirmation. Life need for today's lesson. Aim. Students will think that sometimes it appears that wicked people get all the breaks and cannot be stopped from doing terrible things. Introduction. Job's situation. Job was a wealthy and righteous man who, through a series of events, lost his possessions, his children, and his health. As a result, Job began to question God about suffering. Job's friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, mourned with him over his great loss. After the time of mourning had ended, Job's friends wrongly assumed that all suffering is the result of sin and began to persuade Job to repent of his sins. Job, however, was not suffering because of sin. God was orchestrating the circumstances in Job's life to prove Satan wrong. Bible Learning Aim Students will know God hears the needy and poor cry out and redeems them from their sorrows. Job's Questions Job 24 1 Almighty, Powerful, Mighty One are all names for God that can be used in this verse. It is fitting that Job uses the term Almighty in reference to God. Injustice has been committed, and Job looks to the ultimate power and authority in the universe to right the wrongs on earth. Yet, the wicked seemed to be in control, and the godly had no defender from these evil men. A Judicial Calendar, Verse 1 One why, seeing times are not hidden from the Almighty, do they that know him not see his days? Job is wondering why God doesn't make some sort of judicial calendar so people could clearly understand his plan for justice. This is the way we humans think. 
We want justice to be done right away. But God's justice is different from ours. CF Isaiah 55, 8 to 9. There's a time of final justice judgment day, but no one knows when that will be. God does not deal with us as parents deal with toddlers. We may not be punished for wrong immediately or rewarded for good right away. That would make us just God's toddler puppets, but he desires for us to do what is good, no matter what the consequences may be. Job is speaking of justice for those who know God. The Hebrew for know is yada, yadi h, and it means more than just an intellectual understanding that there is a God. It means to respond to him, to recognize his rights as God Almighty, and to esteem him as God. Job thought that especially those who worship God and obey him deserve to have him answer them in regard to punishment and reward for the things they do. Why? Hebrew word. Majua Madioa asks Job, not seeking the answer, but expressing sorrow that he does not know the answer. 2. The Plight of the Oppressed, verses 9 to 12. Job is concerned about injustice in this diatribe to the Almighty. He is crying out in anguish at the cruelty of this world. The Pain of the Oppressed, verses 9 to 12. Job begins to look at the suffering of others who seem innocent and powerless also, verses 2 to 8. He wonders why they, too, suffer unjustly. The theological term for this is theodicy, and it deals with the question of why an omnipotent God, a God of love and justice, allows suffering in this world, particularly when bad things happen to good people. The entire book of Job wrestles with this problem. Christians have come up with several answers. One is that God allows pain because it refines and purifies us so that the end result outweighs the suffering endured. Second, if good were the only choice open to us human beings, we would not have a genuine choice. So our evil choices cause much of the suffering in this world. Although these reasons do not fully explain all the problems in this world, God calls upon us as his followers to trust in his sovereign design and his love for us, even when things seem upside down to us. Job is beginning to grow and look beyond his own problems to see that others are in similar situations. This is one area where we definitely should be growing spiritually when we ourselves are suffering. It should make us more sensitive to the plight of others. The first example Job mentions is the cruel person snatching an infant to pay for a debt. The example is exaggerated in verse 9, a hyperbole. It would not make sense to take an infant as a slave. A baby would have to be fed and cared for until old enough to do any worthwhile work. But Job is making the point of the cruelty that would cause a person to snatch a child from his or her mother. The next example is likely an exaggeration also. While those in poverty may not be running around naked, they are destitute and dressed in rags. And the next three examples show extreme worker exploitation. Farm workers carry the sheaves of grain, but do not have enough to eat. Others crush olive oil, but it is implied that they receive no oil for their work. They stomp on the grapes, but they don't get any grape juice or even water to drink. Job sees that people are wounded and dying, they're crying out for help, but God doesn't seem to be doing anything about it. In each of these examples, we see suffering that is not caused by God, but is caused by the wealthy owners of the agricultural businesses. But Job says that injustice is not confined to agriculture. There are cries from those in the city as well. Not only does God want us to trust him to bring about justice in the end, but he also wants us to help others in their distress as we are able. Question 1. How does God seem to respond to injustice at times? Job 24, 12. Change in perspective, verses 19 to 25. Finally, Job begins to argue that the wicked will not get away with their sin. He realizes that the wicked are punished in death. This is a fact of life as much as drought and heat consume snow, verse 19. God's justice does prevail. Verses 19 to 25. Job's side of the debate so far has been that God ignores the wicked and they are not punished for their sins, while the innocent face suffering as God turns his face away. 
But Job seems to be changing his ideas, since we read in 19.25-27 that he is expecting to meet his Redeemer face to face in the afterlife. Although he does not have a clear idea of hell for the wicked, he realizes that the faithful can expect a glorious future after death, and there will be punishment for evildoers in the end. Job acknowledges that just as snow is melted away by heat and dry air, so the wicked will come to the end of their lives and be remembered no more, verses 19 to 20. Even if they have a well-attended funeral, they will soon be forgotten. Again, Job returns to the idea that the wicked are brutal to the poor and helpless. This time it is not to the widowed mother, but to the woman who faces great problems alone. Maybe she has no children, a disgrace in that era, or maybe she is a widow without anyone to help her. In most societies, lone women are at a disadvantage. We all know elderly women and single moms who are in poverty, but in the ancient patriarchal society, things were even worse for women. People think they can get away with taking advantage of women who are alone because they have no one to stand up for them. But in spite of the ancient context, God commended women who spoke up for themselves. Read Numbers 36 to see how God defended the rights of the daughters of Zelophehad Job says he feels like doing the right thing is not worth it because in spite of the good things he did, he is suffering. Then God gives him spiritual insight and he understands the final end of the wicked. Instead of Job standing on slippery ground, the wicked will be feeling the ground pulled out from under them. God is helping him and guiding him. Even if his physical health and strength may fail, God is his strength forever. Yes, and the unfaithful will finally be destroyed. Job has not reached the end of his wrestling match with his friends and with God, but he will get there. How could his friends insist that the wicked are always immediately punished and the good never suffer? Job gives examples from real life that prove otherwise. And yet he is not saying things are just backward of what they say. Yes, evildoers are punished. We just don't know when it could be upon their death. Yes, God will reward those who follow him. But again, we don't know when and the greatest rewards will surely come after we die. Question two, what is the cost of wickedness? Verses 22 to 24. Students' responses. Aim, students will embrace the call to participate in God's purpose to bring justice to the poor and weak of society. Are there widows and poor people in the neighborhood whom your church can minister? Are there lawyers in your church who can help the oppressed fight against discrimination based on the Civil Rights Act of 1964? Is your group praying for God to bring justice on the wicked? Pray and act in the fight against oppression of the widows and the poor in your community. Dig a little deeper. Hope complains. Job 24, 1, 9 to 12, 19 to 25. Job, Jeremiah, and the psalmist, Azaph, all vented their frustrations to God because the wicked prosper and do evil deeds while seeming to go unpunished. Jeremiah, Chapter 12 and Azaf Psalm 73 record complaints to God and God's response. Like Job, both acknowledge their dependence on the ultimate justice that God will render to evildoers. Azaf even concludes that he had been foolish to grieve because he knows God has him in his hands, will guide him through this life, and afterward receive me to glory. Psalm 73 verse 22 through 25 KJV. In the United States today, crime rates are rising while arrest rates are declining. This means that more and more violent criminals are apparently going free. According to Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, data, in 2020 only 54% of U.S. homicide cases were cleared, meaning someone was arrested for the crime. No one was even taken into custody for the remaining 46%. 46 in addition, homicides increased by 30% in 2020 and sheriffs and police departments are overwhelmed with cases. Thomas Hargrove, who heads the Murder Accountability Project, says it's never been this bad. During the last seven months of 2020, most murders went unsolved. 
That's never happened before in America. He also notes that murders of black or Hispanic people were much less likely to be solved than murders of white people. What may be even more alarming is that this data may not be surprising. Valerie Baggett of Honolulu Church reminds us that things will get worse, see 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 5, and that it's okay to complain to God, he knows our heart anyway. He is our friend. Go ahead, vent to God. In fact, it is far better than venting on social media. Baggett adds what Job, Jeremiah, and Azaf acknowledge, God is sovereign. He sees the big picture. He is more concerned with evil than you are. We can trust him for he alone offers the way of life. Let's pray. Dear gracious God, help us to see the needs of those around us and for those we cannot see. Allow us to make a difference in the lives of those who struggle. Help us to open our hearts, eyes, minds, and hands to do what you have called us to do for others and for ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for listening and to God be the glory.